week and it was uh, and I would uh, try to get them their card and uh, the other place will help them out the most. But the problem is currently in Massachusetts, we, uh, we as veterans, we are getting taken advantage of for wanting to get off the opioids. Um, instead of uh, people actually wanting to help us out, they want us to be their, their customers. Uh, we're trying to change that. So money's never a barrier for any veteran, 100% or not, to get off the opioids. There should never be a reason that it starts with money for someone to be suffering. So that's what I do. So shit should be pretty for veterans, is what you're saying. People with severe PTSD that are in, in VA facilities getting injected with all, all these chemicals, people like that should, should have free RSO and medicine, things like that, that's your point. It's not even free, it's, it's given to us as a benefit. It's beyond free. You know, they're telling us we earn those pills, all that other medicine, but as far as... Provided by the VA, the federal government. Exactly. Now that we got to wait on feds to legalize, which when that happens, the party's really over for all of us. Alan? For veterans, it's important to think about individualized care and remember that every person has their own unique kind of cannabinoid system. The same way you have your immune system, the same way you have your own sympathetic system. So you need to find out what works best for you. There is no one answer that I've heard again. It's like you would say, find out what medication you're on and find out what you're using this cannabis for now. Are you using it to eat for sleep? Are you using it for PTSD? Are you using it to
These people are trained by the state to know every nook and cranny where the state and the government hiding money for veterans. Every veteran in Massachusetts has a right to $1,000 when they get home for their first deployment, and then a $500 stipend after that for every time they come home. A lot of people don't know that. So as soon as they get home, I advise them to sit get with a link up with their VSO. Uh, another agency I, I strongly recommend is the, the, the Disabled American Veterans. Those guys are, are, are above and beyond capable of help linking up any veteran that's recently turned is looking to get squared away with their their uh, with getting their uh, evaluations, their assessments, or even just getting a diagnosis uh, sheet to even start the process to talk to a cannabis doctor and even get a grant cannabis prescription. Uh, after that, what Steve Mandelli was saying, I strongly advise that veterans you now take a long, uh, long look at what they're taking so they're not mixing any medications that have strong side of strong negative and then look, as Helen's saying, look at what, uh, what you're trying to treat and what's going to affect the endocannabinoid system in your body to better treat it. So we're starting with cities and towns, the BSOs and stuff, non VA related places, I think that's great enough. Well, well any, any of the any of the, uh, the veteran service developments out there, but all I did, start small and go big from there. Yeah, absolutely. The DAV got me my claim in three months. I was home, homeless in three months, they got it. Man, same question. Veterans straight out of hold up Egypt, you know, three months back, like what do you do? Alright, well, basically it seems like everybody's coming in. We need to educate ourselves. I mean, we need to get in there, do the do the legwork. We're gonna find the groups that are out there that are willing to help people. We're not very good at the fight thing. Uh, so basically education on all this is the biggest part. People come home and You gotta find out what's actually gonna work. It's like everybody says, you can only reiterate the same thing so many times. But find out what works for you. It's pretty much, you're really gonna work for you. So find what works best. You don't want to spend all your money all day long on something that's not gonna work. So find the groups that are already done the work. Get them to help you do the work. So pretty much all I got. Yeah, we, yeah, what are you saying? Five minutes of research to save you ten dollars of fucking cash. Take the time to do the research and save yourself money in the past. Because if you're like me, or like any other veterans on the you're on a fixed income. And any veteran returning is going to be on a very fixed income for an unseemable amount of time. So uh, it's better to do the research, waste the time, instead of wasting money. Now, I got, I got another pretty specific question to, well, not really specific, but something that people like us would definitely experience. Guys that were in our unit, guys that we knew from the military that are very, very far gone. I ran into this stuff with myself, well, with my friend in, in NorCal, just like going off the deep end. What, do, what to do about somebody like that? Well, a lot of this, uh, we do still have some personal responsibilities. There are a lot of people that there's never 100% of anything. You're never going to be able to get to 100% of the guys never going to fix a problem 100%. The best thing is to, to find out that they're you know, at least taking care of themselves. Find out if they are enrolled or seeking help there, but there, there are many times that are running people. Someone would come to me at an earlier point, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have done anything. I was already all set. I didn't want to be talked to. I didn't want to be approached by anybody. I was already talking to doctors. I already heard it all. So the best thing is to just check in every once in a while, but don't ever try to push too hard. Uh, you could, you don't know how bad of a day that person's having, so at least just keep checking in. That's all I can do. Um, so I have this happen with some of your friends, and like uh, Steve was saying, you have to be gentle, and then I give them information. Um, and then some of the friends will actually recognize that there's a problem. Like I have a friend who's been on prescribed safety medication and anti-anxiety medication for almost a decade. And his liver hurting, he's killing his body, and he's like, oh, what do I do? So he started on some CBD. And now with it being uh, recreational and having to deal with it actually opens up that conversation more so, because I found that a lot of that you know, we live on the street now, and even though we know that it's propaganda, it's stigma, they still, you know, right is right, wrong is wrong, and cannabis is wrong, or staying away from them and going for a pharmaceutical production of doctor's business. 
So if I need to be like, actually, you know, the government owns the battery, 6630507 since 2003. Oh, do you know how you're looking at it? And just, you know, I give him treats and I tell him, you know, Joe's going to make sure that his wife knows the board takes anything so that way um, so if he does have like a panic attack or PTSD comes about that she knows just to be mindful of it. So just making sure that you're there in the support system and letting them know that they're plus and they're not alone. I think the system has to start when you're enlisted before you actually get out of the work. Because when you're in, you have so much structure and you have so many people who turn to you to say, like, ask questions, and you get an answer. And it's not, you find somebody else that may have an answer. When you get out, you don't have a support system. You have nobody to follow on to. So if you have a structure set up previous, and when you get out that you're still attached to, that still helps you have structure. Helps you to uh, reformat what it is that you're doing. That will allow you to get into the civilian market of cannabis, and what have you, without actually having to dive right into the pharmaceutical field. So give us options, but also give us the break when we get out. Not, not from you know the distresses because that's part of what we do. But you know, a break from having to rely on maybe being hopeless for six months because we have no idea what we did. We lost all the direction that we had and now we're back to square one.
Uh, I just would like, I want to hear a personal experience that each of you have. Tell me a story. Mitch, you want to start? Yeah, this time, so you can have the fresh answers. I get fresh answers. Alright, if, uh, if we're using uh, fresh experiences, I, I, I'm going to use Ashley because I always, this, this little girl is like literally the same time now. She's had a lot of these things all the time. Her mother's a big advocate for this. She's a lot of old master base. The girl has more seasons than you can imagine. I mean, her day is physical. You can literally see that coming on. When you see the bent over, when you see that itch, that collar thing that everybody knows, that's where all the bells are coming off, well, and that scratch that you got. She's a 12 year old girl, and you can see that she doesn't know what's happening. My mother doesn't know she's happening because she's never been on the boat. Any of us have been around and seen in the first three seconds of her getting that, that Jones, that Jones. That little girl can have CBD, literally vaporized CBD, and instantly go from a color mess and sitting there curled up, screaming and crying, to jumping up and running around. I do a lot of everything. I don't care if you're using creative. Their parents are good with it. How does it cost? I mean, so basically, I don't know. I'll gladly stand there all day long in front of a judge and my freaking chest full of medals and say, absolutely, that's exactly what I do. Um, for me, we need to be reaching out, helping the ones that we have the availability to help. Um, and uh, like I said, I, I stick with this little girl a lot because she's such a like, She's as smiley as smiley gets. And 90% Literally the only thing that actually helps her out. That's a beautiful bit. Uh, where I started, I got a discharge from the Army in 2010 after uh, uh, the mentor. Uh, the vehicle got struck by several fathers on the line in 2007 uh, when I was in uh, Iraq with the Army. Uh, I broke my back, broke my shoulder, tore uh, a bunch of ligaments in my knee, and of course, the traumatic brain, not the traumatic brain injury. Uh, from there, uh, got out of the army. I was very angry. But I did not want to leave. I was trying to support the army, so I took the anger out by everything in the army. Really bad. Man, get me locked up for a while. Uh, I was really angry. It's very painful. And I did some things that I shouldn't do. Uh, did my time. Got out, I would manage to get myself into a PTSD clinic. Really turned me around. It was six, uh, six months of intensive therapy, intensive therapy, intensive therapy, intensive therapy. Got out there. As soon as I got out, I wanted to fucking get the next guy. I'm like, I, I wanted to get that guy. That turned me into the late one. The guy, the angry guy, the angry guy, I can't even I was, my anger was undescribable. And I, I wanted to help the next person evolve past that and become a person that can still be happy, to feel happy, and then move forward with their life after their death. So, my journey started after my treatment to start helping other veterans move forward as I can move forward and like the right things to come. I went to school for uh, psychology. Due to my arrest record, I cannot get a job in that field. I've been no background check. Blah, blah, blah. Thank you. Um, so, I help out the best I can. I listen, I talk, I, I go out, uh, and my, uh, my experiences, I, 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 I've got enough to like, help when I can, but do it hard for myself. I try to make sure another veteran, at least one or two other guys, who many as I can. Don't end up letting that anger get me locked up again. Get locked up at all. And if I can go forward with that, that's what I'm trying to do. Can you say that? Yeah, you're, you're saying it just fine, bro. Is that random? I'm an Iraqi veteran. Uh, I was in the Army over 10 years. And um, when I became. Uh, I to the fact that veterans don't have rights in the and we're not protected by the United States Constitution. Under a form, uh, I took it upon myself to uh, together 22 body bags that I made up, and I had to go back my pickup truck, and I drove up to Philadelphia all the year to you know, emphasize the fact that 22 veterans commit suicide every day on pharmaceuticals, and nobody passed an eye. 
everybody's kind of looks the other way. You don't actually have an ability to look at something and say that that's really what it is. It's rough on the bottom. It's not just some numbers on the board. It's not some specific. Some specific, you know? And uh, so that's what I've been doing. Uh, I've been there. Still, I uh, help out. I help with people. Help us better than the streets as well up here. We can do it like that. So I guess uh, my personal story would be uh, when I got out of the Air Force, I started working in the medical marijuana uh, market in California. And in 12, I came back home to And during that time, um, my mom became very sick and I ended up um, taking care of her and um, I dropped out of school and that was, that was my full-time thing for more than a year before I re-emerged into the New England cannabis industry. I didn't know anybody, and I felt very alone. And it, it was the hardest time of my life, because it was like, I knew if I was in California, I could just walk in the store and get my mom THC, CBD, CBD, and like, anything she needed, like, that's my mom, she said she doesn't feel good, and I give her cannabis, she says she feels better, like, I'll fight you if you tell me any different, my mom's a liar. So, that's what I'm here to do, is take care of my mom, and it was, uh, she passed away in 2015 in New Hampshire. They didn't have a functioning medical marijuana program. So as far as breaking the law goes, sometimes the government really puts you in a place where my mom says it makes it feel better. She can't have it in her state. I have what little I have in my state. I'm going to bring it to her. And I'll be damned any other way. So with that in mind, like just making sure that once she passed, and I saw what it did for her, uh, really advocating for that palliative care and making sure that you have it at end of life and if that's what you want to use aside from except opiates so that way maybe you're more cognitive during the final time then so be it. So I teach a lot of cannabis education that really helps inspire me that every single person I can teach can go out to a new state to a family member to a friend and teach them. So I get phone calls and pictures and texts all the time and people are like oh I took your edibles class or I took your topics class and I'm like we're having a party and they're having a great time or I made these gummy bears and then I'll get text messages where it's somebody in a hospital bed or somebody just passed me and was like, hey, I made gummy bears or I made those hard candies and they really, really helped during that final stage and they really helped relieve pain. So thank you so much for teaching me that. And I feel like I think that's part of my mission not to help because you know it's just teaching that education because you never know who's going to be able to use it and even years later when they can use it in life and who they can help. Uh, and it's, you know, it's important for the veteran community, it's just important for like, the human community. Every single one of us has an endocannabinoid system or a person that could use this plan or this information, so being a good steward and getting it out there. All right, so for me, um, let's say back in December, when I finally had the VA come after me, uh, take half of my benefits away from me, saying that I was too active. So I decided to try to one up. I uh, stood out in front of City Hall in Boston for the week before Christmas, collected a couple hundred uh, toys for the, there's a center in uh, Worcester for female veterans that are homeless with children. And we provided those kids with their Christmas presents for Christmas. Um, then this past April, after I got the VA to say that they were basically assholes and they were wrong. It took two letters of uh, congressional inquiry to get that changed. So I took uh, a few thousand dollars from the retro check that we're all familiar with from the VA and uh, bought breakfast for the 250 veterans that live at the Movement Center Room of Veterans uh, right next to City Hall. And myself, my wife, and uh, City Councilor Tito Jackson served the hot breakfast the 200 veterans that were telling us they haven't had a hot breakfast in eight, nine months. They can't remember the last time they had a, like a hot breakfast, and I think that's disgusting. Um, the work I do helping um, other veterans, um, the, the most gratifying work is when it's not cannabis related. It's more related to being able to be functional again because of cannabis, and just being able to help everybody, not just veterans that want to be involved with cannabis. Um, that's, a, that's a small, small percentage of us. Um, I feel like the industry gets too caught up in cannabis, cannabis, cannabis. And if you replace that with opioids, how would you how would you sound? How would you think other people sound if that's all they talk about? So I think it's getting past that and getting into helping everybody, no matter what it is, helping homeless veterans, helping children, helping minorities, just 
standing up for what's right. Um, just because we are hurt, uh, just because the VA labels us whatever, and we get all these different labels, uh, we're still serving. We still care about this country uh, more than most. We are in Massachusetts. We're only five percent of the population. There's only 330,000 veterans in Massachusetts. Just over 89,000 disabled veterans. So we are we are also a minority group, and we need to stand together and make some changes. So no more no more veterans are being taken advantage of in, in any aspect. Myself. Um, I'm going to be putting my money where my mouth is next year. I'm going to be having three dispensaries open in Massachusetts. And we're going to have programs to help out those 100% disabled veterans. The more customers that we come in, the more we can get it close to zero for, for veterans and, and what they can get their medicine for. So I'm looking forward to being able to do that and helping out even more as uh, I have more um, funding and tools available to do that. We can make some noise. We don't even need to win. We just need to make noise. Seriously. 
sisters off, why? Why do that? You know, you, these guys would do, give you the show off their back overseas and you want to take, you know, 40, 60, 70 dollars from, from them for, for medicine and you go around claiming that you help better and you'll do it. Actually do it. No more ripping each other off. Um, there's no need for it. We need to come together and change things together the way we all want it. Not just a few of us want it, but for everybody. Do not misrepresent yourself. That's, that's all there is. You know. I fucking love all of you, dude. This has been a great time. 